Welcome to Geography 485 585L Internet Mapping Module 5.2 Developing and Hosting Open Geospatial Consortium Services OGC Services and Styling in GeoServer Part 2 In this week's lecture we will review raster styling in GeoServer and we will continue our demonstration of raster styling in our interactive session later in the week. As we introduced last week, the raster symbolizer uses a slightly different model than the vector symbolizer that we focused on in our previous discussion. In particular, the raster symbolizer provides a set of options that relate to the rendering of individual pixels within a raster image where the color values that are assigned to those individual pixels are calculated using a variety of interpolation or selection methods. You have options for the number of distinct colors that may be applied to those selected values. And you have um, then options for the actual uh, bands or channels that may be selected from a particular raster to contribute to either a combined red, green, and blue representation or a representation based on a single channel or a gray channel. Finally, there are options for actually modifying the, con the contrast of a raster image either at the individual band level, if you're working with a multi-band representation into red, green, and blue channels, or for a single gray channel band. There are additional components for raster symbolization that are included in the OGC styled layer descriptor standard that we discussed last week. These Stand, these components um, aren't all implemented as a part of the GeoServer implementation. In particular, shaded relief, overlap behavior, and image outline options within the OGC standard for the styled layer descriptors are not implemented in the current release of GeoServer. Here is an example of a, um, an, a styled layer descriptor for a raster color map for the definition of how uh, colors may be assigned to, in this case, a digital elevation model. Please remember that as in our discussions last week, what we are looking at here is not the complete styled layer descriptor but only the portion of the SLD that actually defines the representation style. As discussed last week, the header and, and root element for the styled layer descriptor must also be included in the SLD that you would generate for a complete and valid SLD to bring into GeoServer. Here we see um, starting at the top of the styled layer descriptor for a raster um, data set, this layer name is given a name of GTOPO, and we are in this case defining a single user style that we are giving the name DEM, and the title, simple DEM style, that would be used by some client applications that are making use of the style in their uh, representation in a map interface, for example. The abstract may also by you, be used by some applications in uh, providing further, more detailed information about the particular layer and the style that, that is defined for it. We really get into the meat of the style once we get into the feature type style, where we define our rule within which we have a raster symbolizer, and within that we now have a master opacity value of 1.0 defined for that entire raster symbolizer. This is one element that we will discuss in a little bit more detail later in the lecture, 
where this is one of two locations where you can specify the opacity of the generated image. In this case, this is, this is an opacity of 1.0 for the entire symbolized raster that will be generated. Within that, we now have the definition of a color map, which is the core object or element that within which you define individual color map entries that assign spe specific colors to specific values within the raster, potentially assign labels to them, and optionally assign opacity to those individual um, values or segments of the color map for which that rule will be applied. And that, that description will hopefully become more clear in a moment as we talk about the different methods for applying these color map entries. But here you can see that we have several color map entries, each defining a particular color that is associated with a specific value in the raster. So you can see the quantity values in these entries range from minus 500 to 0, 1000, 1200, all the way up to 3500 with labels that correspond descriptively to those values, where for the minus 500 value, there's actually a label assigned of no data. After the definition of this color, color map, we then basically just close the rest of the elements that have been um, created as a part of this definition. We can see that this is the entire styled layer descriptor definition for our raster um, color map for this, this DEM. Our default raster color map, if you do not specify a type, is the ramp type of color ramp, where essentially what you are doing with a ramp is defining points along a continuous uh, color definition where you, um, between which you essentially interpolate color values. So if you do not specify a type equals ramp or another value, GeoServer will assume that you are using a ramp type of color map. And this is an illustration of what a ramp type color, ramp, color map looks like for that previously defined digital elevation model. You can see that the gradients are fairly continuous and all of the pixels appear to have colors associated with them. This is in contrast to the explicitly defined intervals color map type, which you must define specifically, where the values, the quantity values that are defined as a part of the color map when you're using an intervals type, actually define the essentially the endpoints of ranges of values to which a specific color will be applied. So while the ramp type actually interpolates colors between the quantity values within a raster, an interval type defines a set of colors and, a, and only those colors that will be used in rendering your map image. The intervals are defined based upon the lowest value as the start point for the range and values just less than the next value in the range. So if we look at our example here, if we had defined this as an interval type of color map, the color that is defined in the third entry where the quantity equals 1000, the color that would be applied to the interval between 1000 and just less than 1200 would be the 00FF00 value, 
that is associated with the quantity equals 1,000. Similarly, the interval defined by the next entries, the next color map entries, starting at a quantity of 1,200 and going to just under 1,400, would be represented by the single color FFFF00, meaning that the range to which that color that is a, assigned to the quantity equals 1200 is applied to all pixels that range between 1200 and just under 1400. And this is what that sort of translation of colors to defined intervals looks like in the map image. Your third option for specifying the color map type is one of values, where in this case, the values are used to select the specific pixels that values that will be used in rendering the map. And only pixels that have the quantity values that are specified in the color map will be displayed or will have colors assigned to them. This is why we have in this illustration this somewhat dirty collection of a small number of pixels on a, essentially a white background where we are seeing only the pixels that correspond exactly to the quantity values that were defined in our color map with all other values having no colors assigned to them. So this is a, uh, a, a type of color map that is most frequently and appropriately used when you have, say, quantitative or qualitative data or nominal data for the classification of your raster. So you might have a vegetation classification raster that has 12 classes of vegetation and you want to be able to individually assign colors to those classes. For continuous data, like an elevation model, this values type is probably not going to be your first choice for rendering those data. Is those continuous data are likely to have values that do not align perfectly with your quantities that you are required to specify for each color that will be rendered in your raster. Another capability that you have as a part of the styling for GeoServer is the ability to request a legend graphic from GeoServer that represents the values depicted in a raster map. And you can see three different legend graphics that are generated by GeoServer as a result of the Get Legend Graphic option provided by GeoServer. On the left, we have the color map uh, uh, defined by a ramp, where you really do see a continuous range of colors that correspond to essentially the defined data values between those interpolated colors. The middle legend represents the, um, the interval approach where essentially the colors are only those colors that are defined in the color map, but they are used to assign essentially those colors to the raster values that range between the lower and the upper values for each pair of values. In the third element, you actually see no significant difference uh, visually in the, in the legend, but the, the clue underneath at the bottom of the legend saying that color map type is unique values is the indicator that this is um, based on that, that um, model where only the values that are defined in the color, color map are included in the uh, representation of the pixels in the image. There are many options for actually customizing
a requested map legend through the some some vendor specific parameters provided by GeoServer. And I invite you to look at the documentation in GeoServer for the get legend graphic request to see what those options might be if you're wanting to uh, retrieve uh, specialized legends to include in your maps for s layers that are published by GeoServer. Another option that you have when defining a color map in, in addition to defining its type is whether or not you define it as an extended color map or not. This is where the extended equals true or false option comes into the definition of your color map. This is another optional characteristic for a color map that you create where the default value is set to false. Where if you set extended to false or you do not specify specifically that extended equals true, the color ramp that would be generated for a ramp type of color map would be limited to 256 colors, resulting in some instances to a map image that might appear slightly stepped depending on the distribution of values and how they change across space you can see a very subtle banding in the image on the left that is a um, extended equals false representation of a digital elevation model where you can see ever so slight bands for those 256 colors that were assigned to the entire statewide digital elevation model. If you actually set set extended equal to true explicitly, you will then have a much more smooth color ramp that may consist of as many as 65,536 colors. This will depend um, somewhat on the number of unique values that you actually have in your data set. But it can produce a much smoother transition of colors across your raster but at the expense of an increasing file size for the raster image that is returned. It is also slightly computationally more complex, um, and generally it's your best bet to go ahead and start with the default extended equals false, 256 color uh, value color ramp, and if you do see banding in the representation, you can then Choose to, choose to set extended to true, as I did in the right-hand image, where you see some reduction in the banding artifacts in the image. Some of the banding is actually a byproduct of the way the data set was in itself was generated, but you do see it smoothed out somewhat compared to the image on the left. If you need to reduce some of that banding effect that is an artifact of the reduced number of colors in your ramp, Go ahead and set it to extended and see if that resolves your issues. Another option that you have is the definition of opacity, as I discussed earlier. And your options for opacity appear in two locations when you're defining a raster symbolizer. First, as we saw in the initial styled layer descriptor introduced at the beginning of the lecture, you can set the opacity for the entire raster data set image that will be returned. So this is a way to essentially set the default value for all of the color map entries that will be used in your map image as it is returned. This will define a transparency value for the image that is returned and allow a client to then use that transparency as appropriate. You also can specify opacity at the level of an individual color map entry. So for example, as was illustrated in the previous styled layer descriptor, and we also see in the example here, we set our no data color map entry that corresponds to 
a value of minus 500 in the raster to an opacity of 0, 0.0, essentially setting those no data pixels to transparent, selecting only those that are transparent, knowing in this case that the data themselves have no continuous values between 0 and minus 500. If we actually had continuous values, we would potentially be using um, a combination of color maps that allow us to use the values for um, uh, being able to set the opacity to zero for no data, but then setting um, a uh, ramp type for other values. But that's a more complex scenario. In this case, we just wanted to essentially set our um, our no data areas to transparent and then starting with our other layers having them as opaque which is the default value or if this opacity value is set for the entire raster data set that value is then applied to all of the pixels that do not have a local opacity value assigned to them We also have the option for working with multi-band raster data sets. So we may have, for example, a Landsat uh, scene that may have seven separate bands in the data set that we're working with. And we may want to combine a subset of those bands into three separate red, green, and blue channels to have essentially a pseudo color representation of that combination of bands. GeoServer supports that sort of selection process by providing a channel selection element within the specification of a raster symbolizer where you essentially assign by channel by channel name where essentially those are band numbers individual bands within a multi-band data set to the red green and blue channels respectively in the example that is provided here we have a raster symbolizer where we have a channel selection element where for the red channel we're choosing the third band from the raster to assign to the red channel where basically the the intensity values from that third band will correspond to intensity values in the in the red channel similarly the green channel is being assigned to the second band of that multi-band raster data set and finally the blue channel is being assigned to the first band in that multi-band raster data set. This is a way to drill into what can be more complex or comprehensive raster data sets that go beyond having a single band or value where you can extract out of a multi-band data set only the band or bands that you are interested in. As an illustration, we can see here two different representations of the same RGB source data, where on the left, we have essentially the natural color imagery of the area of essentially the Western Hemisphere centered on, on, uh, on Central America. On the left, we have the three bands in the data set that correspond to the red, green, and blue channels in the actual designation of the bands being mapped to those same channels. So that's how we end up with essentially this natural color representation where we're, we're mapping the red, green, and blue bands from the source data into the GeoServer red, green, and blue channels. In the right image, we see a reversal of that band order where in the original 
source data, the first band that corresponds to red in the in the first in the source data set is now actually being assigned to the blue channel. The green is applied to the green as that is essentially the second band in both both the um, the source data set and it is being assigned to the green channel in GeoServer. And finally, the blue channel in the source data set, which corresponds to band three, is being assigned to GeoServer's red channel. And you can see the product of that remapping of the source bands into GeoServer's red, green, and blue channels here. Finally, we can look at some very, very basic image processing or image enhancement options that you currently have within GeoServer. And those correspond with your options for actually um, assigning three different algorithms to the, the, the need of increasing the contrast or modifying the brightness of a particular image. The three options that we have are first the histogram stretch so that essentially a histogram is developed for the range of values and then the, the essentially the histogram is used to define the distribution of pixels that go into each color in the range that is being created. This has a way of essentially flattening out the distribution of colors in the source image into the distribution of colors in the image as it is rendered. The normalize option, on the other hand, does its calculation based on the minimum and maximum brightness values that are then used to essentially anchor the values in the data set to the corresponding values in the generated raster. So if, for example, you had an in your original data set, you had a very small number of, um, of, uh, of bright values and then um, a large gap and then a very small number of dark values, the normalized function would not have a lot of impact because the minimum and maximum values might not actually be uh, significant in impacting the mapping of those values to the raster colors. If, on the other hand, your original colors had uh, did not were, were a much wider or a much narrower range than the colors that had been defined, you can use the normalize function to essentially tell your color mapper to ignore the areas with that are outside the minimum and maximum brightness values for your data set. Finally, the gamma option allows for brightening and darkening of essentially your entire um, image by a given factor. And you can experiment with that to determine what amount of darkening or lightening you might need to achieve the visual effect that you're looking for. But this is a uniform modification of the colors uh, that, are, that are used to render your raster across all of the values. This is an example of the contrast enhancement style layer descriptor that, will, that is used for each of the examples that follow, where the only thing that is being changed is the actual histogram, or the actual contrast enhancement um, choice, where it's either histogram, gamma, or normalize. Other than that, this is essentially applying a, an individual contrast enhancement option to each of the three channels that we have defined in our raster symbolizer, the red channel, green channel, and blue channel that we have mapped 
the red, green, and blue channels from the source image. First, we have the normalize option where the contrast enhancement is specified as normalize as you can see above. In this instance, given the nature of this particular data set, the normalize contrast enhancement actually does not have a significant visual impact on this, this data set, primarily because these data were already normalized before they were uh, published and made available to the public. So we do not see a substantial change between the left, which is the default value, essentially the raw mapping of the red, green, and blue channels in the source data to the GeoServer red, green, and blue channels. And on the right, the normalized uh, mapping of those same, same colors into the GeoServer channels. This is somewhat different from what we see when we apply the histogram because each of the red, green, and blue channel, uh, uh, colors in the source data have their own histogram, their own distri distribution of intensities within each of those bands. And when we apply that histogram stretch function to each of those individual colors, we end up actually changing the distribution of those individual colors as they are then uh, translated into the red, green, and blue intensities that are displayed as a part of the GeoServer raster. And you can see the significant impact that has had between the original default image on the left and the histogram um, stretched version on the right. The histogram stretched version actually does seem to bring out some additional detail, for example, in the ocean areas that was uh, somewhat less, less visible and obvious in the original image. And that's a product of essentially expanding the distribution of the blue values independent of the stretching for the other values. And this is one of the reasons why you may want to, again, experiment with the different contrast enhancement um, methods you have available to you to see which may be most effective in telling the story about the data that you are working with. Finally, we have the gamma contrast enhancement option, where in this case, we have applied a gamma value of 0.5, remembering that Positive gamma values will lighten an image. Negative gamma values will darken an image. So in this case, we are using a positive value of gamma, and we are seeing the effect in the image on the right-hand side where we can, we can actually see that the entire image has essentially been brightened or lightened by, uh, through this process. Um, this is another instance where we can actually see a little bit more detail in the dark blue areas in the original image as they are lightened up. We can see some additional features that weren't as obvious in the oceans as had been the case previously. The key here is that this is a uniform transformation across all three color bands and as a result, it will have the overall effect of lightening the entire image. We will conclude our discussion of GeoServer styling in class later this week as we will have our final demonstration and interactive use of styling within GeoServer and address any final questions that have, have come up in your work with GeoServer uh, over the past few weeks.